Now, we have a lot of things today, but I will still do a very short book sharing with you. I may have mentioned that I'm reading Ulysses now by James Joyce. Tiguoma. Amy says yes. Everybody else isn't sure or saying no. Well, anyway, I'm reading Ulysses by James Joyce, and it's a very famous book. If you look at any of the top 100 novels in the English language, Ulysses is often number one or number two. And it's one of them, it's called the second most difficult novel to read in English. I don't know what the first most difficult is, I don't know. <laughs> um, it is really difficult because Joyce had so much erudition. He was so erudite. Do you know that word? And that's an interesting one because of the rising glide. Some people say erudite. But you can expect that the year is going to be dropped for some people because R, sui alveolar, based on alveolar law. So erudite or erudite, I've heard both. And erudition is Xue Wen. He, he was so erudite. He read lots and lots of Greek and Latin and, of course, the English classics and French. He was extremely erudite or erudite. And when you know so much and you write a novel, you want to put your learning into the novel, and that's exactly what he did. So his novel is nearly impossible to read unless you have read all of the classics and know Greek and French and everything else like he did. And he ties his story to a lot of dian gu from Homer. And that's why it's called Ulysses. It's one day in the life of the main character, Leopold Bloom. And a lot of it is written in the very famous stream of consciousness style. In, Chine in Chinese you call it? Yi shi liu. Right. And what happens after a while is, although you don't understand it really when you read it, you start thinking like the book is written. Your, your thoughts start coming out like Joyce, and then you get worried. <laughs> he describes every little detail of his day, and what happens is, he describes going to the toilet. I happened to be listening when I was on Donghua um, Beilu, Donghua Beilu. And so now every time I go by Donghua Beilu, that's, that's what happens when you hear something in a certain place, it's always associated with that place. So I keep thinking, why do I feel so gross when I walk in this place? Ah, I know, I know why. Yeah, and all the other gross things that people do, but prefer not to talk about or hear about. You'll find all of them in Ulysses. And I got a very good reading of it. I don't find it easy to get through novels, reading print editions, because I have to read my linguistic stuff. I have to read that first. It's more important. But if I'm hiking or driving, I can't read print editions. So that means I can listen. And so this one is not from LibriVox, which I've told you about before. LibriVox has thousands and thousands of books for free audiobooks for free. You can just download them, however many you want. And in many languages, not just English. There are some in Chinese, not so many, but they have some. It's usually things like Tang Shi and Si Shu. But they have things in French and German and Dutch and Russian. Mostly English, though. This one, though, is, I think it's called archive.org. Oops, not I. <clears throat> archive.org. All you have to do is type in Ulysses Audio and you'll find it. It's the second link. It's a very, very good reading. It's done in dialect with characterizations. A-R-C-H-I-V-E means Dang An. That's another place to find free audiobooks. And a lot of their books are actually on LibriVox. But archive.org, I think, has things that LibriVox doesn't. <clears throat> they have a lot of like you can find just about anything there. So anyway, I'm reading Ulysses, and it's very hard to understand. You get all this of crazy thoughts. You know when your thoughts are disorganized, you're just thinking, you're walking along thinking, oh, I have to have my homework done by 5 o'clock, and I'm hungry. I think I'm going to go get a cup of coffee. And you know, everything is just 
very za. Well, that's the way it is in much of Ulysses, although each chapter has a somewhat different style. At the end, it really gets all mushed together in stream of consciousness. So it was, it's very hard to like this book. I don't enjoy it very much, but I feel a duty to finish it before I die. We call that a bucket list. A bucket list means things you're going to try to finish before you kick the bucket, right, before you die. So as you get older, you'll take that more seriously. You know that your days are limited. When you're young, you don't quite believe you're going to die. You just don't believe it. You think the world will end before you die or something like that. You, you don't really believe you're going to die. But after about 40, then you start believing you're going to die and you realize you better use your time well because your days are limited. So I guess it's because it's on my bucket list. If it's number two on all these lists, I really should read it. It's sort of out of duty. I don't enjoy it a lot and I don't understand everything. So just as a hint, if you ever put it on your bucket list, you probably need a book to understand the book because it is so full of Dian Gu and Irish dialect and kind of crazy thoughts all coming together that you probably need help understanding it. And this is, I think, the classic, the one, not the only one, but this is one of the guidebooks to Ulysses that a lot of people recommend. It makes the whole story comprehensible and much simpler. So you have to read this and then read that. In addition, it's best if you've read Homer. So the Odyssey and the Iliad, especially the Odyssey, and also a previous work by Joyce called A Portrait of the Artist as a Young Man. Now that's a normal book. You can read that and understand it. It's difficult and tiring, but you understand it. It's totally, to totally ting dong, okay? <laughs> it kind of don't. That will help you with this because some of the characters are from that book. Um, but in any case, I just wanted to share that with you. I finally, I didn't want to buy it. It's very expensive to buy online, and they have it in the library, so I just borrowed it. <laughs> okay, that's today's book sharing, Ulysses. There's also one little funny thing. It's a song that we heard when we were little. It's a parody. It's called Hello Mudda, Hello Fada, and you can find it on YouTube, I'm sure. There's, it talks about a little boy who, who's been sent off to summer camp, and he's telling his mother and father, I'm so lonely here, I'm having a miserable time. Why did you send me here? Please take me home. Except later on in the song, he says, oh, it stopped raining. And people are swimming and sailing. And he said, mother, father, please disregard this letter. <laughs> so it's a funny song if you want to hear Hello, Mother, Hello, Father. It's by Ellen Sherman. There's one line where it says, he's talking about the camp counselors. And he says, and they read to us from something called Ulysses. Because, you know, in the book, the book is a very important So, in this book, the book is a very important He says, and they read to us from something called Ulysses. Uh oh. In the book, it's a very important thing. So, if you have a book, it's a very Terrible. All right, that's book sharing for today. Um, not related to phonetics, except that you find Irish dialect. The, because he himself was Irish, he couldn't stand Irish people, he didn't, couldn't stand living in Ireland, he moved away from Ireland, but he wrote about Ireland after he left. Everything he wrote was mostly about Ireland. All right, here's our plan for today. Our test on chapter six will be when? On Monday the 24th. And I have some work to return to you, but the TAs would like to look at it first because I made a few tiny changes. They do a wonderful job in looking at your homework. They do a really, really great job. And uh, um, I would like to next ask you about Vowels and Consonants, Chapter 11. Wasn't that an easy chapter? Wasn't it easy? Didn't that feel good? All right, questions? Any questions? Quickly, quickly. We, we have a lot of stuff to do, yeah. Uh, that, uh, he said he made a model according to his mouth. Right. Uh, why he, the model can only produce vowels but not consonants? Because in the IPA chart, we can easily describe the consonants, but a vowel is harder to describe because it's a continuum. But why, when we apply it on model, it's a continuum? Oh, it's just the opposite. That's right. 
I think what he said is he tried to make a model, but it didn't work really well. Isn't that what he said? Making a model to produce the sounds of language is quite difficult. Um, I feel like looking for a, uh, a YouTube file, a YouTube video for you, that shows a model made by a Japanese. It's 感觉好像是非常外太空的感觉. Somebody did make a model that produces the sounds of speech. It's pretty, it's pretty weird. Mm. It's really hard to make a really convincing, to produce convincing speech from such a model. It's difficult to make. It's not that easy. But later on, he used a computer to do it. And by a computer, you don't have to produce all of these fricative sounds and all of these stops. In a stop, you're going to have to put an uh sound and things like that. They're much harder to do with a computer. You can do it. But it's much easier to just input three formants. We haven't done a lot on formants, but we've done some on formants. You know more about formants this year than students other years because he's put a lot on acoustic phonetics towards the beginning of the book now. So it's much easier to just give the computer a bunch of numbers for formants one, two, and three. 你只要是同时好像是合唱团的那个合音,一个chord. It's not hard to do on a computer, it's quite easy. You don't have to supply a lot of 噪音 and things like that. Those are much more complicated. So vowels are much easier to do on a computer. Yeah, consonants are more complicated. When we're talking about articulatory descriptions, because we have things touching each other or vibrating or doing this or that, it's much more duty. It's much more concrete and easy to describe. When we get to vowels, we're talking about hearing, and that's why it gets hard. But it's exactly because of that that it's easy for a computer, because they're just numbers, basically. They're pitch numbers, numbers, they're, they're frequency, frequencies, yeah. Okay? Does that make it clear? Kaima, anything else? Yes. Um, you don't need the and. You don't need the and. Try it again. Mm -hmm. uh, it seems to me that the two descriptions are a bit similar, and I can't figure out which one I use. So which paragraph are you on? Uh, second, no, third, third to the last. Okay. Yes. The R at the beginning of rod is difficult to describe for two reasons. First, it is pronounced in different ways in different dialects of English, and second, in most forms of General American and BBC English, all that you can readily feel is the contact between the sides of the tongue and the molar teeth. It's difficult to describe for the same reason that vowels are difficult to describe, because R is very much like a vowel. So that's the first point. It's hard to describe R because it behaves like a vowel. We don't have any real contact. Things get close and it's, approx it's an approximate. So so that describes that, or explains that. There is usually no contact between the tongue and the roof of the mouth. Many BBC English speakers have the tip of the tongue raised toward the roof of the mouth in the general location of the alveolar ridge, but many American speakers simply bunch the body of the tongue so that it is hard to say where the articulation is. So he's saying that for British English, it tends to be pronounced with the tip of the tongue close to the alveolar ridge. So very, very, very. It's more tip of the tongue close to the alveolar ridge. But for Americans, many of them just bunch up the tongue. Instead of just more relaxed, but the tip of the tongue is close to the alveolar ridge. I scrunch up the tongue. And that sounds more American to my ears, just listening to myself produce it. So very, very is less strong, but very, very sounds really American. <laughs> Amy's nodding. Okay. Can you tell the difference? Amy, something interesting you can share? I was wondering, like, because he speaks a bit more British accent, so I was wondering, like, how does he say the word very? Uh, uh, but the, uh, I didn't notice such. How do you say it? Very. Very. If it's a little more relaxed, just tip of the tongue towards the alveolar ridge. Very, very. That's more tip of the tongue plus alveolar ridge approximate. But I tend to have bunching, but not as much as some people. Because when I hear Americans really bunching, it sounds, you wouldn't make what a good And 
the time it really struck me, I can remember a time when I heard that kind of English spoken with really strong R's. It was really jarring because I'd been in, I was in Hong Kong at that time actually. And I hadn't been speaking English for a long time and, and suddenly I heard these American businessmen talking with these really strong R's and I was like, wow, that's where I'm from? Good heavens, that's my culture? Yeah. And actually I don't speak with R's that are that strong myself, but it really jarred me. I don't know if that made it clear or not. So the very strong one is a very bunched? Bunched, yeah. More bunching, I think, gives that really strong American sound to it that I don't really like. It's too, too American. Yeah. 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 Mine is a bit bunched. Maybe not quite like a BBCR. Um, OK, that answered the question? Good enough? All right, someone else? Anybody else? That's it? If that's it, then hand in your work. What chapter for next week? Next we're going to have our dictation. So get paper ready, put your name and other information in the upper right hand corner. Today we're going to have data from Lakota. Lakota is a Native American language from about the area where I grew up. Not quite. Where I live, they speak Dakota. There are three varieties of the same language. Where I'm from, it's called Dakota, or Sioux, S-I-O-U-X, Sioux. Sioux, and then the other main Indian language, which we're not doing today, is called Ojibwe. There are other names for it. They also call them Chippewa. Chippewa is no longer favored. We don't, we look, it's not politically correct anymore so much. Ojibwe is still popular. And their own name is Anishinaabe. Anishinaabe, I think it's an I. I have a schwa there, so it's hard to remember. Anishinaabe sounds right. Anishinaabe. Let's try again. And the name of many ethnic groups in their own language often means people. So if you look at the name that a group of people calls itself, it's often the word for people. And that is the case with the Anishinaabe. I'm not sure now if it's I or E. Please somebody check this for me, Anishinaabe. Anishinaabe. I'm not sure which it is now. Anishinaabe. Somebody check. Okay, Anishinaabe means people, and that's the name they actually prefer, but people often say Ojibwe. And there are different spellings of Ojibwe. That's not the only one. So that's one group of languages in Minnesota. That's more towards the north. More towards the south, we have Sioux, and that was given to them by Europeans. Yeah. S H what? S H I N A A B E. E, yeah, I had a feeling. Double. Double. Nabi? Uh, it has to be. N, home is a double A, ma. Oh, I will go with one A. The one I remember has only one A. Yeah, ho lai xiang. Yeah, e bi jiao xiang. Okay, Anishinaabe. There we go. Thank you very much. I appreciate that, Anishinaabe. Mm, that's the languages or the language spoken more in the north of Minnesota into Canada, and in the south. Is the Sioux or Dakota, and sometimes it has an H in it. And another variety is called Lakota, and that's spoken in South Dakota. That's where my father's from. And there's a third variety called Nakoda. Those are easy to remember. The, no, the, the coda, Lakota, Nakoda. And this is Lakota with, a, with an L. So I'm giving you real data from Dakota, from Lakota. And I'm going to tell you the vowels we're going to use. We're only going to use four different vowels. So I will be testing you on vowels, but 
It will only be one of four. So if you get the one of the four correct, you'll have no problem. And the four vowels are E, E, A, O. Not a diphthong. Those are the four vowels you'll need. Don't use anything else. That will solve some of your problems. Is it E or A? Like, you don't have to worry about that. As for the consonants, you're going to have to pay close attention because you will find that they have several contrasts of the same place of articulation or at the same place of art articulation. Everybody ready? Actually, they do have, we, we do have IPA and spelling. It's written in the Latin alphabet, but of course you don't need to write that. I'll show it to you when I give you the answers. Um, I'll use the microphone. And please watch and listen carefully. Be careful for the sounds that we learned in this chapter. But I will tell you one thing. There are no implosives and no clicks. I can tell you that. So no implosives, no clicks. I can tell you that. And there is a several way distinction among the stops. I can tell you that much. Here we go. Watch and listen carefully. One. And mark stress as well because most of them have more than one syllable. Not all, most of them have more than one syllable. So mark the stressed syllable. Number one, everybody? Okay. Put e. Put e. Can put a little space between the syllables just for convenience. You don't have to. Make sure you mark stress. Put it in brackets. And since we have time while you're writing, I'll put the vowels up over here. And what I'm going to write is the meanings of the words. For Khmer, I didn't have the meanings of all the items. For, but for this, for this dictation, I do. So if the meaning helps you, <laughs> then you're in luck. Let's go on. Number one again. Put e. Two. A pe. A pe. Number two again. A pe. A pe. Number three. Ing. Ing. Those are all the meanings for the items. Number three again. Ready? Ing. Ing. Number four. Ok o. O. Oh. Ready? Number four again. O o o o. Number five. Eh eh. Ready? Number five again. Eh. Eh. Number five again. Eh. Eh. Number six. Gap oja. Gap oja. Watch your stops. Use your Mandarin ears to hear stops. Look up when you're ready. Number six again. Gap oja. Gap oja. Ready? Number seven. King. King. Ready? 
Ready? Number seven again. King. King. Number eight. Got e. Got e. Number eight. Got e. Got e. Number nine. Ready? O. 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 Oh, sorry. This is this is wrong. 取消了 Number nine. O. Go. O. Go. Number nine again. O. Go. O. Go. Number ten. Pe. Pe. Number ten again. Pe. Pe. I'm going to read through all of them two more times each. Ready? Number one. Put e. Put e. Number two. A pe. A pe. Number three. King. King. Number four. Oak o, oak o. Number five, eh, eh. Number six, gap oja, gap oja. Number seven, king, king. Number eight, gat eh, gat eh. Number nine, o go. O go. Number ten, pe, pe. Did anything repeated? Number seven, king, king, king. The first one, put e, put e. We okay now? All right. Let's put the answers on the board. Please fit your transcription in this space. I'm going to put the spelling over here when you're done. Okay. Please go ahead. Let's go. We're going to mark. How about if we exchange papers now? Exchange papers. Use a different colored pen. Always have a red pen with you in class. Yeah. Okay. So exchange papers, and we're going to mark. Um, I guess I will use a red marker here. First one. First of all, I'm telling you that the stress is always on the second syllable, on all of them. Hmm. 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 -hmm. Stress is on the second syllable in all of them. Here's, that's okay. We learn through mistakes, so don't feel bad, but learn from your mistakes. That's, that's the really the, the huge value in mistakes is learning, because there will not be learning without them, as I keep saying. Okay, let's go. So this is who. Who. Eh. Oh, that was my fault. I missed it. Okay, then. Na jiao jiao bu suan. Okay, bu suan cuo. I missed it. That's what I missed. What did I miss? What That's the only u. That's the only u. My fault. My fault. I missed the u. I just wanted to help you with the vowels so you wouldn't freak out. So this is put eh. If you wrote O, now you better not write it. Cause you saw this H just went wrong. Okay, so the the U was my fault. So stress needs to be on the second syllable. Okay, well, we didn't build one, but actually I practiced with audio files many times. Not this year. I designed this in 2010 <clears throat> or 2011, actually. Questions? We okay now? So put E. Stress here, and this one's ejective. This one is aspirated, and then the next one is correct. Very good. So ape, 
Ape. And then I said I was going to put the spelling up. I don't want to put the spelling in red. Mm, in the spelling, it's very close to the IPA. So for aspirated initial stops, it's going to be PH. And then the E, this vowel, is written like this. All right, the second one, you can, how can we spell it? Now you know how to spell it. A, PH, and then this vowel again, same vowel. And the third one, now this is a Taiwan English problem. It should be. What kind of a nasal is it? It's a velar nasal. Those of you who thought it was alveolar, you need to work on your nasals. That's a typical, typical Taiwan English problem. You need to fix that. You need to hear alveolars and velars clearly. You need to be able to differentiate the, um, between the two very clearly. So, and how do we do it? First of all, go to the I think that will also help. But the things to use, there are two things to use, two reference points in Mandarin, or two sets of reference points in Mandarin. What are they? From the article, you know they are. An gan ang can always help you. Anyway, nobody says ang chang. Nobody says that, right? That I know of. Nobody that you know, maybe. Nobody says ang chang. So when you say an chuan, an, 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 that's jiri jiu si alveolar. So match an chuan, the an, na ge an, to the sound you're hearing. Xiang the hua jiu si alveolar, bu xiang. Ta ru guo xiang sema, ang zang the ang, xiang na ge in the hua na jiu si alveolar. So if you're still having problems, an, Tran, an, an, alveolar. Ang, zang, ang, velar. The other way to do it is, for the harder one I think is alveolar. Un, dian, the un. But don't just say un by itself. Put the dian after it, because the d will keep your tongue in the right place. Un, dian. Everybody say it? Un, Everybody says it with an alveolar articulation. So if you use un, dian, you can also find the un, and that gives you a different vowel, a ah, and a. Ah. Maybe don't match the vowels that you need. So un dian, the un, un, you can find it for sure. 你光看注音符号的恩跟恩, right? Are we all clear on that or not? Please give me feedback. You're better than dying one. They're still really. They're very smart. Their English is quite good, but they're just, <laughs> except for one student. All right. Um, so this one, it's good you got the adjective, ing, ing, and this is velar. Next one, this, yeah. Oh, you can mark that because there's only one syllable. To mark stress, you can also put in. I said to please mark stress. If there's only one syllable, actually it doesn't matter. But yes, to mark stress, you can do that. I do that myself. No, I didn't actually. <laughs> I thought I did. I didn't. All right, this one. Oh, oh is correct except for the stress. We're going to move that. And that's the way I realize stress, and that's the way I remember it from the audio file. So now you know how it sounds when I'm stressing a syllable in some unknown language, or at least this one. So o oh, o. Oh. And then the spelling I haven't been putting up. They actually use the angma in their spelling. They use some special mm -hmm. symbols. So they write it like this for um, ing plus the, plus the adjective mark. And then ok o is the same. There. And the next one is p e. This is correct. And if you put a stress mark, that's OK, too. Don't need it. P e. P e. Elm tree. This is yu shu. Yeah. Or is it yu? Yu de ma. OK. Then its spelling will come. <laughs> um, you can you can tell me the spelling. 
ejective. E. And we've got a little mark here. It's all the same vowel. Okay? And then this one, I have to tell you, as far as I remember, they do not have voiced initials, voiced initial stops. So that's why I said use your Mandarin ears. Remember when I said use your Mandarin ears? Do your Mandarin ears, ears have a ga sound? No. Except for when I'm talking to Sophie and I say Iban. <laughs> That's the only time you find voiced initials in Mandarin. Okay. Just why we're down to so. All right. So this is not g. It's it's a k. I'll put it in red so it'll stand out. Gap oja. The rest is correct. Gap oja. If it were voiced. I will make it a bit more exaggerated because I want you to succeed. I don't, I'm not trying to trick you. So listen to the difference. This was gap oja, gap oja. If it were voiced, it would be gap oja, ga, ga. You can hear me getting all worked up for that ga, right? So gap oja is incorrect. It's gap oja. Train your ears to watch out for that because, in fact, you're good at it. All you have to do is pay attention and remember which is which. If you don't hear that g sound, it's not voiced. Mr. Uh, how, how would you pronounce uh, retroflex Z in, in uh, the dictation? Ah, in contrast to the Z, you mean? Yes. Gapoja. <sighs> So I didn't I didn't I didn't retroflex it. So listen, I'll I'll contrast the two. Gap oja gap ora gap ora ra 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 ja ra ja You can use your Mandarin ears again. So ran ho the ran ran ho ran ho as opposed to ja, gap, o, ja. Are we okay on this one? Yes. Uh-huh, thank you. I, I forget this stuff. I forget lots of stuff. Gap, o, ja. It should be here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Ms. because I thought that, um, I think that uh, in time measuring, that's the retroflex is not so clear, so they sound, they usually sounds like the No, I don't think so. I disagree. It's true that retroflexes in Taiwan are attenuated. No problem. It's almost like English, but not the R. The R, we have two choices, and that is either ranho, ranho, you still hear the r. It does not ranho. This is zh. I don't, I never hear Zhan Ho from a native speaker, do you? Zhan Ho, no. Not for Zhe, for Zhe Zhe Zhe, yes, I agree. But not for Zhe. You either have Ran Ho, more Beijing, Ran Ho, if you want to make it stronger. Or you have Lan Ho, Le. Either Zhe or Le, but not Zhe. In fact, foreigners, because in Wei Toma Shi, the Z sound is represented with a J. That's why you see like, Stevie G was complaining about, um, what's her name? Anyway, she's a singer. Don't you know these things? Wang, that's it, sorry. Anyway, she writes her name, Ruolin. And Stevie G was complaining about the crazy romanization, but it's not crazy. This is just Wei Giles, J-U-O hyphen, L-I-N. That's just a way to that's all. Nothing special. And the reason Wei Giles picked the J is because of the Zhe sound. But foreigners learning this system, they often replace it with the Zhe sound, and it sounds really dumb. Hao Zhe. Tian Chi Hao Zhe. Sounds terrible, right? All right, that's enough. Let's keep going, unless we have questions. How does this language between the uh, and uh, how do we, oh, so fricative and affricate? That's an old question comes up very often. How do we distinguish between je and je, right? Is that the question? That's an old question. 
All right, for this one, it's easy. Here's my standard answer. Take a shh. Start with shh, everybody. All right, add voice sing. Shh. Good, perfect. You've got a zh. Some people find this really hard to learn or to teach, but that's all you have to do. Start with shh. No Taiwanese has trouble with shh. Shh, that I can remember right now. Shh, there you go. Now for this one, just use this. All right, and then just make it short. Zhe. Zhe. There we go. Can you hear the difference? Zhe. This is not zhe. Zhe. Yeah. Just shh. Now it's clear. So you've got, you've got easy resources from English and Mandarin, and you can even use a Taiwanese shh if you want, because the Taiwanese shh sounds like this anyway. So shh and zhe. This one is more like a stop or like a fricative. I've asked this before in class. More like a stop or a fricative? More like a stop. We tend to make it short. You can make it longer, but then this is the only part we can make long. We can't make this long. So for example, judge. We're going to lengthen this part. It behaves more like a stop. It's both. Okay? We clear? Any other questions before we go on? That was the bell, but we're going to finish this. The next one, and we didn't put up the spelling. And they use this symbol, it's a Z with a dot over it. This is the symbol they use in their spelling. Gap Oja. And then number seven, ging, is correct. That's good. And that's spelled the same in their spelling, in their orthography. Uh, they actually use an engma, as I mentioned above. Ging. And then got eh. Everything's okay except for where you put the stress mark. The stress comes before the stop. Okay? Got a. Uh, got a. Uh. But it's good that you got the g the, with the k. And the next one, oko, which I read wrong the first time, is just written like this. And then the last one, pe. Pe. Tell me how to spell it. Tell me how to s pronounce this letter. No, this letter, look where I'm pointing. No, no, I'm sorry. The name of the letter, not, not pronounce the letter. I should have said, what's the name of this letter? H. Yes, Jerome, please. H. Listen to Jerome. Do it like he does. H. Everybody? H. Don't say. H. Yes. Etch is an English word. It means And often you can do it either with an instrument or you could use a chemical to etch. There's a toy called Etch-a-Sketch. I don't want to get carried away with too many things. But etch, that's a word. The letter is pronounced H, A, E, A, B, C to A. Everyone, H. H. All right, now let's go back to spelling this word. Spell? P, H, E with a accent aigu, right. Ah, OK. We missed that. Let's see if I can, oh, I'll just put it in here. And that one is, you can spell it for me. Go. K. Mm -hmm. OK, very good. Yep, that's it. Anything else you want to ask? Wasn't it kind of fun, actually? OK, hey, that's a real language, real data. You know, I don't like manufactured data, unless it's really simple, then I can deal with it more easily. But this is real data. You can find the audio files on the internet if you look for Lakota lessons, Lakota. Just 
Do a Google search on Lakota, you will find this stuff. I don't know if I put the link on some years ago or not, but you can easily find it, I think, on the internet. Any other questions? Please have a look at your own paper. Make sure that nothing was marked unfairly and hand in your paper. Yeah. Um, that's okay. Initial glottal stop is fine. You don't need it, but it's fine. Because before we say a, before we pronounce a vowel, an initial vowel, we often have a glottal stop. In, in almost any language. Anything else? Hi, you may all. Okay, have a look at your paper, hand it in, and it's break time. All right, our plan for the rest of the class, we're going to now go over the summary at the end of chapter six. We're going to go over your written exercises, so keep your red pens at the ready. We're going to do the performance exercises, and that will review the sounds, these weird, unusual sounds, which are not really so unusual. If you leave America and China for a while, you find they're not really that unusual, some of them. We'll do the performance exercises, and if there's any extra time left, we'll start on chapter seven. That's the plan for the rest of second hour. Let's try to be efficient, but I also want to be thorough and clear. So I often will end up going slow just in, this, in the interest of being clear. If something sounds like, if it sounds like some of you are not understanding something, I would rather take extra time and go over it one more time than keep moving on and then not digesting what we've covered, yeah? Okay, whose turn is it? We're on table 6.8. We're just going to go over each one. We'll have to do it slowly. We'll only do one line, at a, one line at a time, and then we'll discuss it and practice it before moving on to the next line. So table 6.8, title is? Table 6.8, the principal actions of the Gladys. Very good. All right, keep those words in mind because it's very easy to just 念过去然后不记得那个标题讲什么 the principal actions 一些怎么样行动作为 whatever you want to call it 动作 of the glottis 我们现在讲的是猴这边 first of all uh, uh, first glottal stop vocal folds together and the symbol is a question mark with no dot and it is not a tap and a tap is not written as a backwards glottal stop symbol. Remember, I think Sophie had to tell you like five times or something last semester. A tap looks like a cane. This is just an ordinary question mark with no dot, a glottal stop. And we pronounce it as uh, everyone? Uh. So we open and closed our glottis very quickly. If it's at the end of a word, it's just a quick closure. For example, um, we use the example, um, for example, 吃饭的吃, go ahead. 就是闭着,紧闭着,很快. So we don't have to open and close it. It's already open from the vowel, and it closes quickly for our final glottal stop. And at the beginning of a word, like one of you put a glottal stop before the vowel, ah, uh, or whatever it is, usually when we Say a word that starts with a vowel. The first sound is not a vowel, but a glottal stop. Ah, ah, uh, uh. uh or not a vowel. So a glottal stop is a very, very important sound to master. And but, mm, but, mm, 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 mm. And uh, 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 huh. It has lots and lots of uses. It is not a phoneme in English, but I mentioned a language in which it is a phoneme last semester. Hawaiian, very good, you got it. Okay, Jaffin. Um, <laughs> Hawaiian, they have very few consonants. They have p, they have h, they have no t. They do have a m, and, and n, they also have n. They don't have many more. They don't have s. They're missing most of the consonants we're familiar with. But u uh, is a consonant in Hawaii. So we pronounce Hawaii in Hawaiian as Hawaii, Hawaii. 然后女生爱传的那个像睡衣的长袍叫木屋木屋 It's M U glottal stop U M U glottal stop U It's, it's uh, reduplicated So 木屋木屋 That uh is actually a phoneme in Hawaiian Alright, go ahead uh, Number two, ejective Vocal folds together and moving upward So 紧闭着你的声带 
，就是声带两片，然后紧闭在一起。And then we have, we push the, we also, um, we also execute the articulation for the stop, if it's velar or if it's alveolar or if it's bilabial or whatever. And actually, there are some that we didn't learn here because we haven't learned about them yet. We'll learn about them in chapter seven. And one of them is a uvular stop. We learned it a little bit last semester through the tutorials, remember? The plosives and voicing tutorials. So, ah, 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 well that was an injective. Ah, 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 ah. And this sound, as I mentioned, is very common in which languages? Ah, ah, it can also be voiced. Ga, 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 voiceless voiced. It's very common in the aboriginal languages of Taiwan. As far as I know, most of the aboriginal languages of Taiwan have uvular stops and nasals as well, probably. So this is a very useful sound to be familiar with being in Taiwan. So we didn't learn about the uvular ejective, which we have in Georgian, and that's ah, 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 ah. It often gets a little affricated, ah, okay? because we haven't learned that actually formally in this textbook. So let's do the four ejectives that they list here. Everybody, the first one? Ah, uh, put an I after it's easier. Ah. Uh. Second? Ah. Uh. Third? Ah. Uh. And the fourth? Ah. Uh. Okay, that's not a stop. It's a fricative, but it can also be ejective. And keep going. Uh, number three, implosives. Closed vocal folds moving downward, usually nearly closed vocal folds moving downward with regular vibrations or creaky voice. All right, and you still have using a falling pitch in most of your pauses. It's not so bad for a table. Actually, it works okay for a table, but we still should use a continuation rise when we've got something coming. So listen, usually nearly closed. I made nearly really strong because. We want to emphasize it. It's a kind of contrast and emphasis. Usually nearly closed vocal folds moving downward, downward, continuation rise, with regular vibrations, continuation rise, or creaky voice. Can you try it that way, Jerome? Usually nearly closed. From the beginning? Uh, closed vocal folds moving downward. Downward. Moving downward. Mm -hmm. Usually nearly closed vocal folds moving downward with regular vibrations or creaky vibrations. voice. Vibrations or creaky voice. All right, please make that one of your weekly um, pronunciation goals. Continuation. Is it already one or not yet? Uh, is it, it's, a, it's already one from uh, yeah, I, I, I've already put that in my list. Okay, for which week? For this week. Good. <laughs> That's perfect. So for this week, work on your continuation rise because you're you're very good overall. There's no, no, no arguing about that. But let's just focus on the things that you can do better. And one is continuation rise. So the vocal folds are closed, and they're moving downward. And usually, although they're closed, actually a little air is coming up, so they're not completely completely closed. We've got little bubbles of air coming up because we have regular vibrations because we're often using creaky voice when we're doing implosives. So um, let's try these. Repeat after me with ah, ba, ba, mm, mm. So close your mouth completely and your nose as well. Don't let any air in from your nose either. So close your mouth and your nose, but not, I mean you don't have to pinch it or anything. Just use your, your velum and then make a swallowing sound, and that will show you how implosives work. Mm. 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 Nothing, nothing is allowed through your nose. If you're going mmm, it's a nasal, no nasal. Mm. Plug up your nose like you're gonna go swimming. Everybody plug your nose. Say plug your nose, so I wanna hear, I wanna hear if you're really plugging your nose. <laughs> your sounds too normal. <laughs> make it sound more plug, plug your nose. You can't make an N, N, it will become a D. Plug your nose, 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 nose. It becomes a D because you can't make a nasal. 
plug your nose. Everyone? Plug your nose. All right, if you plug your nose and close your lips, close your mouth. If you're going, mm, you're letting air into your nose. Cheating. So be. <laughs> plug your nose. You're going swimming. Do you swim? Do you swim? You can swim? No, Jiro. <laughs> Looking at who? <laughs> Me! <laughs> Do you swim? Yes. Alright, so when you go underwater, you have to hold your breath. And the way you hold it in is by raising your velum so air doesn't come in through your nose. Because you don't hold your nose when you swim, and you don't use a nose pincer, right? So, or what do you call those? Nose plug. So use that. Then you're plugging your nose. And then you won't make a nasal. So let's try it again. No air through your nose, no air through your mouth, and swallow. Okay. Ba. 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 This is gonna sound wonderful in the video. <laughs> ba. All right, let's try the alveolar. It's a little harder. Ba is actually ba is the easiest. Da. 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 Ga. 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 Okay. That's probably the hardest. If you're having trouble with it, it's understandable. But please still try to do it. Use the instructions I just gave you. Close your mouth. Plug up your nose like you're swimming. And then make a swallowing noise. Mm. Mm. And then prepare to say a b and then an i after it. Ba. Mm. Ba. Mm. Start swallowing and don't open your mouth till you're halfway through the swallow. Mm. Ba. 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 Did you hear my instructions? Did you understand my instructions? Tina Doma. Okay, write them down. Practice implosives. Okay, I, I'm not going to require that you absolutely master them immediately, but I really would like you to learn implosives before the semester is up. Everybody try to learn implosives. You can do it. Um, if you're still having trouble with ejectives, work on ejectives. Nobody should have trouble with a glottal stop. Uh, uh. Basketball hits your tummy. Uh. Everyone can do that. So ejectives, if you can't do them yet, practice. You can get them. Ejectives are not as difficult. If you're having trouble, go to Carol. Okay. Or is there anybody besides Carol who's pretty good at adjectives? At, up, ah. Anybody? Who else is pretty good? Biakuchi. Hayose, hai putsu. I think Jerome also has it, no problem? All right, you can go to Jerome, you can go to Carol. How about you, Amy? How are you doing? Amy's fine. You can go to Amy. Okay, how about Vivian? Okay, so, ni to wa yo sangarin kai chi Uh huh, Sylvie, how are you doing? Ah. Uh, ah. Uh. You can do all three. Yes. Let's try the try the S. Ah. Uh. There you go. You got it. Okay, Bella. You have it. Okay? Fine. Any? Okay, you're using pulmonic. You have to close your glottis. Bing <gasps> I think, okay, everybody quiet. It's Annie's turn. Uh -huh. I can't tell if it's pulmonic or not. Okay, please practice with anybody on this side of the room. Vivian also needs a little help. Okay, Yumi? Okay, use ah, 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 not the, it's voiceless, ah. Okay, not the, you don't have to put a vowel there, ah. Ah, I think you sort of got it, ah. It's, it's like you're about one third of the way there. I think you're about there. More practice, I think you'll be okay, Miranda. You're fine, you got it. Okay, Tina? 
It sounds pulmonic. I think you're going to need a little help from a classmate. Okay, Wendy, can you do it? I think you've got it. Okay, so there's just a few of you that need to do a little more work on ejectives, and that's pretty good. That's awfully good. Um, for implosives, who can do implosives? Carol, you can do them? I'm not sure if it's implosive. We'll try it with ah. Bah. Yeah, it sounds good. Oh. Bah. 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 It's coming in though, it's not bah. It, just heavily voiced is not implosive. Here's heavily voiced and then I'll do implosive. Okay? Bah. bah. It sounds pretty good. It's sometimes hard to tell between. Ba and ba. Ba. I have a kind of a twangy sound, so you can tell it's definitely implosive. And it's more twangy than it is usually for a native speaker. So, ba. Ba. Everyone? Ba. Yao tun. Tong si yao tun. Ba. Da. 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 Uh huh. Ga. Uh huh. Okay. Next. This one's easier. Uh, number four, creaky voice. Mm -hmm. Vocal folds held tightly together posteriorly, but vibrating usually at a low rate anteriorly. Oh, you read those adverbs beautifully. I bet native speakers would have a hard time reading them because we don't usually use those two words as adverbs, but you read them absolutely perfectly, with R's even. Okay, so posteriorly, anteriorly. Ah, wo yi but. Those are things that I'd probably misread if I were going in a hurry. All right, so vocal folds held tightly together, posteriorly, but vibrating usually at a very low rate. That means how to pinu di down, you can shoot it to like email, don't you see? Anteriorly means in the front. So that's easy, first of all. You're all good at it. Nobody has problems with that. Let's do it now while we are also making a voiced initial stop. Uh, and then put an uh, I after it. Ah, uh, ah, uh, da, ah, uh, a. Eh. Okay, you're fine with creaks. Next. Uh, number five, modal voice. Oh, that five. Five, everyone, five. Five. Uh, I'm going to teach that Sunday in Kaohsiung. I'm going to Kaohsiung to give a pronunciation workshop. And that will be one thing, because I'm one of the test items, they won't get to see the video before the workshop, so it's okay, is five and fife. I'm going to say fife and then see if they check five, and I bet they will, okay? Because <laughs> I've done it many times before. Uh, go ahead. Number five, mm -hmm. modal voice. Okay, modal voice, because voice is repeated, so creaky voice, modal voice, and? Modal voice. Regular vibrations of the vocal folds. Right, and this is just normal voicing. Modal is in parentheses because this is the unmarked um, use of voice. Voice is It's unmarked, then it's modal voice. It means ordinary voice. We really don't need a special word, but to be fancy, we gave it a special word. So, everybody, ba, ba. da, da. Ga. ga. All right, next. Uh, number six. Breathy voice, mm -hmm. murmur. Right. Vocal folds vib vibrating mm -hmm. without coming fully together. Without coming. Without coming fully together. Uh huh. Often during a stop release. Stop release. Stop release. Yeah, your e is still too long. Stop release. Stop release. There's something funny about it, and in, in many Taiwanese reading that word release, it gets too long. You have to make it really short. Cut it short. Listen carefully. Use echo. Use the echo. Release. Listen a few times. Release. Release. It's not release. I'm, nobody will bug you about it except me. However, it's not quite right if you say release. It's release. 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 Okay, use the echo and repeat. Release. Go. Release. Use the echo. Release. Go. Release. Okay. It's tending to be a little too long because you're trying hard. When you try too hard, then you make it longer. Release. Go. Release. 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 It's getting better, OK? Um, this is breathy voice. That's also not too difficult. So let's do it with an initial ba. 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 All right. So 
in what languages do we find that? Sindhi, Hindi? And then the breathy vowels we find in? The breathy vowels we find in? Another language of India? Gujarati, Gujarati. I remember I reminded you, for the sake of the quiz, please remember some of these important names or representative languages that have these sounds. So Gujarati has the breathy vowels. Hindi, Sindhi have the breathy stops. And next? Number seven, voiceless. Vocal folds apart. Okay. Ba, da, ga, sa. Everyone? And voiceless nasals. Ma. Na. Na. Let's do those again. Ma. Na. Na. And we have those in which language? A representative language with voiceless nasals? Burmese. Burmese. Just remember Burmese. And my Burmese friend just wrote me over Facebook the other day, so I've got that way at the front of my mind. Uh huh. Burmese has voiceless nasals. It's not the only language with voice, voiceless nasals, but it's a very good representative language that has voiceless nasals. Once more. Ma. Na. 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 And the last one? Last one. Aspirated. Vocal folds apart. Vocal folds. Vocal folds apart during the release of an articulation. All right, and I don't say during, everyone. I say during. 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 And for British, remember it's during. During. During, yeah. yeah. And those are like pa, pa, ka, sa. Everyone? Pa, sa. All right, so we can sort of tao tai the ones that are really easy for you, although you need to remember representative languages that have these sounds. What language has aspirated voiceless initial stops? English. English. And? Mandarin is a good. OK, English and Mandarin, you need to keep these in mind. What language has, we already did the voiceless nasals. Everyone remembers that's Burmese. Good. How about voiceless, unaspirated initial stops? What language has those? Voiceless, unaspirated initial stops. Give me a couple example languages. Mandarin. What else? French, Spanish, Portuguese, Italian, you name it, they all have it. Okay? Mm, how about breathy initial stop, initial stops that are breathy? Breathy initial stops? Cindy? Hindi? Yeah? Gujarati, we're going to save for the vowels, the breathy vowels. Gujarati, right? And then for modal voice, b, d, fully voiced initial stops. Where do we have those? Do we have them in Mandarin? No, good. Do we have them in Cantonese? No. Okay. However, they are found in Shanghai Hua. So it's not as though Chinese never use them. It just happens to be our dialects familiar to us. How about Minayu? Yo, right. And also, the funny thing about Minayu is it's missing in an, a voiced initial. We have Li, right? Mi. Li. And we have t, you. We have, so that's g, that's velar. But we don't have d, so may all. But that's, that's a chue, that's a gap in the system. But that's because there's something funny going on in Minayu with which other sound. How do you say one week? Right? How do you say shili? It's a tap. It's a lateral tap. Basically, it's an L. It's an L. So, initial L in Minayu often ends up to be something like de, shide, shide, shide. But it's, it's a lateral tap. Was it Iban? In one, then they got taps. Central has a lateral. Water. Water. It's central because it's shide, shide. Is lateral. Sometimes you hear people say xile or cha la, cha la, yu xiang el. It's a lateral tap. 
人闽南语 ，it's a tab. It definitely is a tab. 不能延长 You can't say 西嘞是不可以的。西嘞西嘞是可以，西嘞西嘞都可以，可是不能查。So that's why it's a very interesting sound, and it's connected to English in that way. We both have American English. We have taps. British English doesn't always have taps like that. So a lateral tap in Mi Nai, that's good to know. And that's interfering with an initial voice D. So there is no initial voice D in Mi Nai. We've got that lateral tap kind of interfering. And that sort of takes that gap, takes, it gets into that gap. Creaky voice, what's a good language for creaky voice? Mandarin. Mandarin, not Mandarin, Mandarin. Mandarin, and there's no e at the end of Mandarin, everybody. No e. Mandarin, home in, 不加 e 的哦 A lot of you put an e there for some reason. Japanese, home in, 不是 s s, 是 s e. Some of you spell it wrong.、Um, besides Mandarin, though, we also learned about another language with creaky voice or laryngealized sounds. Hausa, yeah, Hausa, and that's spoken in. Where's it spoken? Somewhere in Africa. That's pretty good. Where in Africa? Not South Africa. Nigeria. Yeah. How's that spoken? Nigeria. Probably other countries as well. It's got a huge number of speakers.、Um, and then implosives. We have in which language? Which language? You、can go back and check. Cindy, yeah, we have them in Cindy. And ejectives, we have in. Wow, you have a lot of examples for ejectives. Where? Which languages? Sorry. Lakota, Georgian. What else? <laughs> it's not a. It's not a phoneme. They're not phonemes in British English. Those just ofada. They just occur by accident somehow, sometimes. And what was one of the earlier languages that we learned? Also, Hausa has ejectives. So remember those representative languages. And finally, we have a glottal stop. We find glottal stops all over the place, and they're often allophonic. But there's a language in which they are phonemic, namely Hawaiian. Okay, there you go. So you've got representative languages for all of these really interesting, fun sounds. We're going to mark our exercises. Our time is going by fast, isn't it? Let's go. How about if we just go around the room?、Um, is it possible to just Mindy to focus on the whole class so we don't have to keep moving? So just focus on the whole group of students. It's not a large class now. So we'll just take turns. After Jerome, whose turn? Carol. Oh, that's the problem. Is the reading? Is the microphone? Hmm. No, you have to keep on passing. Does it matter? Just pass around, hi Karima. It's okay. Okay, just 照顺序 So I'm going to read the text, and then you read what's in the blank. Why doesn't one person take like four answers? 一个人四个好了 That way, we don't have to pass it around so much. There are three principal airstream mechanisms. The phonemic. Airstream mechanism, the glottalic. If you want a bang chan, that's fine with me. <laughs> Thank you. Uh huh. The glottalic airstream mechanism and the valeric. Valeric. And I don't say valeric. I say say valeric. Valeric. Airstream mechanism in normal utterances in all the languages of the world. The airstream is always flowing outward if the pulmonic. Pulmonic. Then you just keep it. We'll keep on doing this. <laughs> airstream mechanism is involved. So remember.、Um, It、stops with this mechanism are called plosives. plosives. So plosives are defined as stops produced with a pulmonic airstream mechanism. mechanism. That's how we define plosives. Those are stops produced with a pulmonic airstream mechanism. The only mechanism used in some languages to produce some sounds with inward going air and some sounds with outward going air is the glottalic. Glottalic. And I need to turn the page. One minute. Glottalic airstream mechanism. Stops made with this mechanism acting ingressively are called implosives. Implosives. Stops made with this mechanism acting egressively are called ejectives. Ejectives. The mechanism used in language to produce sounds only with inward-going air is the 
valeric. valeric airstream mechanism. Stops made with this mechanism are called. This is so easy, isn't it? Stops may vary in their voice onset, onset time. In this respect, we have a typo. Cross out O. That's a new typo. That was not in the last edition I checked. This is a new typo. In this respect, B, D, G, R, voice stops. R, voiceless, unaspirated. You can unaspirated if you want to. Stops and uh, but but the ke, not but the ke. So the second one is but the ke, and but the ke, are. And then ke is missing its. Yeah, gosh. It's okay on the CD. It's okay on the CD. It's not in the book, though. And that's unacceptable. Gosh. These, these are new mistakes. Some of the old mistakes were fixed or half fixed, and then they brought new ones in. But if you've ever done publishing, you know that's really common. It happens a lot. Okay, it's not an excuse, but it does happen a lot. So, k, add a little raised h. R, aspirated, voiceless aspirated stops. The stops, b, d, g, which occur in Hindi, are called murmured or breathy stops. Remember, they're the same thing. Breathy stops, murmured stops. The stops, b, d, which occur in African languages such as Hausa, are called creaky or Laryngealized stops. All right, narrow transcription. I really don't want to write all of it on the board. I hope you can follow yourself. I'm just going to show you my book and point to the general area. Everybody kind of look at the book. This is not very reasonable to do it this way, but I'm going to do it anyway. So here we have aspiration from he. he. And I have to look at the words so I don't forget it again. It's, he started to tidy it. Okay. So, e. This is the. This whole thing is the e. S, this is all noise for the s. You should be looking this way. S, and then here we have the hold phase of the stop release. Da, we have a little bit of aspiration here. It Indians. And here's the vowel plus the r. Star. I think there's an r in there. If it was British, there's no r. We have started. We have more aspiration. This must be British. So take out the R. We probably don't have an R. Started. Started. And then here we have the vowel. Just a shin. So it's a the defense of vowel. The. They stop. Started. To. It's quite clear here. To. Home ya jaiga. Raised H for aspiration. To. And then the. Aspiration. And then uh, tidy, there's a pretty long pause there for the hold. Tidy, we've got um, a burst here. T, release the shell, this is a burst. Then, aspiration. Ah has longer vertical lines. The second part of the diphthong I, E, has shorter vertical lines. It's all the vowel, but the A ah is more sonorant. It has a smaller, what? Zhenfu. Amplitude, yeah. And then the we've got voicing here. We've got real voicing, real honest to goodness voicing. Tai di. This is the. And they wrote it there. Tai di. And then, 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 it must be just an unreleased final stop. So let me just point again. Kind of look here. Kind of get that guy the chewy joke curly and down in the she she the don't she couldn't come with yet. He started to tie it. I know I sound sound kind of jittery, but.
Okay? And then let's uh, give me your measurements. Just shout them out. Uh, first stop and started. How many milliseconds? It's to the nearest 10 milliseconds. So, 不要说十以内的数字不要。都是 multiples of 10. So, started the diga stop. How long? How many milliseconds? About? Hmm? Goodness. Here. This is 50 here. So, it had a scale. I saw the man show. I have 20. It's the first stop in started, started. 他那个 voice onset time 还蛮后面的,蛮延后的. I have plus 20. Plus 20. 你跟那个 50一比的话, 大概有20毫秒. All right, second, is that okay? You got it? Plus 20. Second stop in started, started. 这里. 这个不比这个短哦 I have plus 20 to 30 因为 it has to be a multiple of 10 so I have plus 20 to 30 How about the stop in 2? That one's especially clear and long Ooh. How long is that? 你看这边的尺度, look 这边的尺度 50 套上去差不多就是 50 Right? Did you all know how to do it? Don't let them All right, that's about plus. Actually, I have plus six or oh, fifty for that. Yeah, for two plus fifty. Then the first stop in tidy. Now that's a shi si, and it has stress, so we can expect it to be longer. So what did you put for that one? Okay, the first stop in tidy. Tidy about eighty. Yeah, it's probably about 70 to 80. Probably about 70 to 80. And then the second stop in tidy, the d. And is it plus or minus? It's minus, yeah. I have minus 70. 我量的时候是 minus 70. Because it could be 80. Minus 70 to 80. It's not to 100. Okay. And how about the next ones? A pi? How much? Plus? Okay, I have plus 50. And by? Minus 10. Minus. Because that's voiced. It's got a vowel before it. And then a spy? Plus 10. There's a tiny bit of aspiration. So plus 50 minus 10 plus 10. All right, label the diagram below so as to show the sequence of events in involved in producing a voiced alveolar implosive. Um, let's have somebody read theirs because you can't just shout this one out. Uh, where's the microphone? Okay, go ahead, Sylvie. Number one. Um, closure of the blade of the blade and alveolar ridge. Once more, please. Um, closure of the blade and alveolar ridge. Okay, um is it necessarily the blade? Yeah, I guess they do they do picture the blade there. I was thinking the tip, but in fact they do they do picture the blade, you're right. Against the alveolar ridge, that's fine. Two? And downward movement of the vibrating glottis, air from the lungs continues to flow through the glottis. Okay, that's exactly the way it is in the book, and that's right. And three? A little change in pressure of the air in the, in the oral tract. In the mm. oral tract, right, or the vocal tract. Either one's fine. And say change again. A change. Make it a little longer, please. Change. A little more A. Change. Change. Okay, now it sounds better. And then four? The plate and the alveolar ridge come apart. Okay, so the tongue blade, the tongue lowers, the tongue tip, the tongue blade lowers away from the alveolar ridge. That's fine. Okay, next reader. And read part E. And then we have performance exercises, and that'll do it for today.
Complete the diagram below so as to show the gestures of the vocal organs required for producing. First of all, try to make a lateral click, everybody. Most of you can do it now. Let me hear each of you individually to find out who still needs to work on it. Oh, wait. Wendy, you're doing a dental. You're doing a dental. And when do you need to work on it? A lot of people can help you now. But you have to keep the body of your tongue stuck against the palate, the hard palate. 就是舌头,那中间的鼓起来的地方就粘住上了. Okay, practice it. Everybody quiet. You have a different sound there. You're, I, I, try it again. It sounds like you got the right idea. All right. So when do you need to work on it? So it's a lateral click plus a velar nasal. Mm. Ah, ah, ah. Okay. Go ahead. The front closure is uh, the tip of the tongue is against the alveolar. Against, against. Against. Against the alveolar ridge. The alveolar ridge. The alveolar ridge. 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 Uh huh. And. Okay. Uh, and the back. Uh, and the back is. Uh, uh, the al the velar closure. Right. For the velar closure. <laughs> For the velar closure. Mm -hmm. Uh, the body of the tongue move, move. Eh. Oh, back of the tongue raised to form velar closure. There we go, to form a velar closure. Very good. Okay, two. Uh, while both the anterior, the, the anterior mm -hmm. and the velar closure are maintained, the, uh, the body of the tongue moves down. Not moves, moves. Moves yeah. down. Good. Down. Decreasing the decreasing the, decreasing the you make air. it too long decreasing decreasing uh -huh. okay. decreasing the air <laughs> pressure in the front part of the mouth. Okay, oh, in the front. and three. Mm, uh, the partial vacuum is released by lowering the side of the tongue. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. Sides, side or sides. Mm -hmm. And four. Um, the velar closure is released. Very good. Excellent. All right. Performance exercises. I think we'll finish just on time. Yeah. Uh huh. So I produce the velar goes down to produce the voiced consonant. What does it say? Point to point to where you are. Velum goes down. Air from the lungs continues to flow through the glottis. Air from the lungs continues to flow through the glottis. That's a good point. I didn't put that in. Air from the lungs continues to flow through the glottis. You're right. It's true. That's right. And it goes out through the nose. Okay? That's good. I well, way low. Though. Okay? Anything else? All right. Let me write it down so I have it ready for next year. Okay? Let's do the performance exercises. A large number of non-English sounds were discussed in this chapter. About the same number of additional sounds will be considered in the following chapter. So we have a bunch of new consonants coming next, in the next chapter, but they're mostly going to be new things that we're doing at new places of articulation like uvular and things. Beginning with the exercises given below, you should spend more time doing practical phonetic work. Try to double the time you spend doing this kind of work. Mainly what I want you to do is practice the sounds that we've learned so you can produce all of them if you can't do all of them yet. If possible, you should spend about 20 minutes a day working with a partner, reviewing the material in the chapter, and going through the exercises given below. Eh? Review the different types of phonation. Start by simply differentiating voiced and voiceless sounds. We're going to use ah, so go from voice to voiceless, and then back and forth again. Go. Ah, ah. 
Now add breathy voiced or murmured sounds to the sequence and those will go in the middle. So we start with voiced, breathy, voiceless. Go, ah, Okay, now add creaky voice at the beginning. So, ah, Good. Now uh, begin with the glottal stop. Ah, Okay. Now do it in reverse. So, ah, <laughs> Now try to do it in a smooth movement, but don't try to go too fast because it'll you'll miss something. So glottal stop, etc. Go, ah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, reverse it. Uh, <laughs> All right, let's try it with m and keep moving because we can't do all of them. So go, glottal stop, creaky, etc. with m. <laughs> Let me do it. I think you're doing it okay, but it's. <laughs> go ahead. Mm-hmm. All right. Actually, I think you're fine with the rest. I went through these before class, and there's nothing hard. You're good at differentiating between fully voiced and voiceless unaspirated, and you can add voicing when you need to, use less voicing when you need to, add more aspiration when you need to. It's mostly just exercises in those. And then we've got the funny... Um, made up data in Q. So please do these on your own. You'll be fine. The only ones that are a little hard are you clicks with the nasals. Work on those. Those are a little harder. And then more nonsense words in V. So please do these on your own. I don't want to keep you over time. We'll have our test on Monday. And we may go over the exercises after the test or even before the test. I don't know. We'll see what happens. And then start on chapter 7. Don't forget your notes on Monday. Keep me posted in your notes on progress in your pronunciation improvement program. And we'll see you on Monday.